starting to stream up back in the studio salute to Knicks Nation the number one show for the fans by the fans is back if you're a diehard Knicks fan who loves to talk about Knicks news Knicks rumors and post game fan reactions after every game hit that subscribe button below and the notification bell so you don't miss anything CP from Knicks Fan TV my man Jay Ellis from the Nick of Time show Jay Ellis how you feel man I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing all right. I'm, back. I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be doing another post-game live show. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm excited. Back Ready? at it, man. Back at it. Um, So, listen. So, obviously, tonight, it was a tough loss. Knicks lose 85-73 in the Summer League. Disclaimer, it's only Summer League. <laughs> but, but, obviously... Obviously, the talk of tonight, the talk of all Summer League has been R.J. Barrett. So I'm going to shoot it over to you. Give me your thoughts on young Rowan Jr. tonight. Well, I mean, listen, we don't want to overreact right. or underreact. It's still Summer League. is R.J. Barrett. But listen, um, the knocks on R.J. Barrett has been always been the three-point shooting. Right. And it's always been... He's a very ball dominant player. How will he play off ball? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a mistake or a coincidence today that he played better when he had the ball in his hands more today. Yeah. And I think that trend will continue. Fizz is gonna have to find a way to kind of, you know, give him the ball more. I think you'll see you seen it today. When when he got the rebound, he's allowed to go and that he and play point guard. And that might be the way to go moving forward since we have so many guards in the first place. I, I agree with you. I agree with you, man. And, you know, listen, my takes have been, I've, and I've we've been debating this for the last three Summer League games. It's just Summer League. You know, too many people have been down on this kid. I'm hearing people in the stands when I was there just moaning and groaning. You could tell the first two games he was, especially the Zion game. I mean, that it was a, it was a star start of an event. You would have thought you was at an NBA All-Star game. How much yeah. pressure you could feel in the room. And so, obviously, he's been pressing the last two games. The shots haven't been falling. He's been forcing a lot. I thought tonight, again, taking it within the context of a summer league game, I thought tonight he was much more composed. He was mm -hmm. much more poised. And as you said, the facilitating was one of the things that I really liked, especially in the second half when they moved him to the one, put Kadeem Allen on the bench and had RJ really running the offense. Yeah. I, th I thought that was key, man. And and he ended up finishing 17 points, 10 boards, and, and five dimes. Yeah, and um, his best shooting percentage night of the summer league so far at 42%. I also kind of like that, you know, the knock on him as well is he doesn't really make good passes under the free throw line. And he's mm -hmm. seen a few of those good passes day when he's double teamed on the right side or left side or even closer to the basket. So it's, it's, I'm glad to see that it seems like the game – it's opening up when he's playing the point guard position. Yeah, I, 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 I liked it, man. And, you know, another thing is the rebounds. You know, even though he's been struggling shooting all three games, the rebounds have been there, have been consistent. He's on the boards. and He's on the boards. And like you said, tonight we got to see him on the boards and then running the offense. And, you know, he found Mitch for some good looks. Found yeah. Iggy on a nice play down, down at the end of the game. Yeah. Found Knox for, for one or two. So, listen, we, we can't get too high or low on these kids, man. It's Summer League. It's his third scrimmage, basically, yeah. in the NBA. Yeah. He's just getting started, people. We got to relax, man. Gotta we have relax. to relax with these kids, man. If you follow me on Twitter, I was like, hey, man, allow RJ to mess up. Yeah. Because I, 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 like, I know it's not going to be a fast starter out the gate. But he does have a lot of upside, so we're going to have to be a little bit patient with him, especially considering that we have a lot of veterans here when the, when the season starts, and there's a lot of guards here as well, so he might not get the chance to play point guard straight off the bat. But um, So we're all going to have to be patient as he tries to learn the NBA game, learn to pick his spots, learn to know when he can play point guard, and, and know when how he can pick his spots when he's a small forward or shooting guard. That's right. And you know what? Listen, again, this is Summer League. This is the time to really get out there and experiment and, and, and get loose, especially on the mm -hmm. offensive end. But I also think from a playmaking and facilitating standpoint, it's important to get him those reps because we got to be able to move the ball. And yeah. if, if he's going to be starting alongside Dennis Smith Jr., who's been inconsistent in terms of running the offense, Alfred Payton obviously has been a little bit better there. Knox, 
you know, rookie season, not so much. The ball movement is going to be critical. The ball yeah. movement is definitely going to be critical. So I liked that they adjusted and, and let him run the point for the second half for the most part. Yeah. I actually feel I feel, I feel like Dennis Smith Jr.'s – I feel like he can run the offense better than most of you give him credit for. Yeah. But I do feel like the shooting is going to be huge uh, for Dennis Smith Jr. this season. I know he's been working on the shooting. And if RJ is going to run some point guard, it would be – Great if Dennis Smith Jr.'s shooting, the, what he's been working on all season, is able to translate into the regular season. That will open up a lot more possibilities if yeah. one of these guys can learn to shoot. I, I, I agree, man. I, I definitely agree. You know, listen, the only only part of the game defensively, I think, is something that you definitely want to start to lock in on early mm-hmm. because you don't want to pick up those bad habits, right? I would think you, you want to go into camp, you want to go into the season um, with, with some momentum on the defensive end. Obviously, we we had no idea who half these guys in the Raptors were. Nope. You know, they were down by as much as twenty something points. The pick and roll defense wasn't great. The communication nope. wasn't too great. So that that's something that you would like to see them get, tighten up a, a little bit as, as the summer league progresses, for sure. Oh, that's that's for sure. I need I need that defense to be more on the string. I need Mitchell Robinson to continue the progress he's had um, last all season and limit his fouls. I know it's summer league, and I know he knows he has 10, but I want him to act like it's a regular season game and be more cognizant of how yeah. many fouls he has and, you know, be able to hold back. But I do, I do agree with you, though. Like, the defense in general just has to get a lot defense better. Defense has to be better. And, and I agree with you on Mitch. I think he has to, you know, watching it live, He's still kind of picking up those late blocks, which are goal tens. Those that's something that carried over from this from the regular season last year, and yeah. also the the fouling. Obviously, again in summer league, you get ten, use your bullets, but you want to see Mitch a bit more composed out there. And, and how about Mitch with the jumper? Unleash yeah. the jumper, man! Unleash the jumper. Get him in some pick and pop situations. Let's see a little, you know, a little jump hook or something. Let's get Mitch a little bit active on the offensive end. I, I like to see that. Yeah, man, let's see. Let's unleash that, man. Like, I don't want him to be in the Dwight Howard situation where he's working on his post game and jumper for like five, six seasons straight, and you never even see it. Yeah, like, let it go, man. Let it fly. See what happens. It's summer league. This is what summer league is for. Man. This is what summer league is for, man. Just let let it fly. Uh, Kevin Knox, you know, wasn't hitting most of his shots, but I think Knox has continued to be aggressive. When I saw him in person, man. Yo, Knox, I, he looked like he got a little bit bigger. He's definitely a solid 6'9", man. Knox is tall, man. Yeah. Knox is tall. So it looks like, you know, he's filling out a little bit. Yeah, like I said, didn't hit his shots too much tonight. But, you know, you still like to keep it keep it aggressive with Knox. Yeah, man. I want to see him stay aggressive as well. I like the way he started the game. Very aggressive. Nice little hand ones, picking his spots, uh, jumpers. I feel like he ran out of steam. It's kind of like how the regular season was. was yeah. really fast starts and runs out of steam later. But uh, hopefully, I feel, I'm hoping he can keep his mental stable. Right. Keep quarter. that, I keep that, like that motor going. Fast. Keep that yeah. motor going. And I think, I think RJ should help. I hope RJ will help, you know, help, help him in, in that regard. But I think whether it's motor, and, and this kind of segues to our, to our next topic, but I think motor and the defense – this is where I think we mentioned Taj Gibson and a potential Marcus Morris, which we'll touch on. This is where these guys will help these young yes. kids, man. Yes. People keep, you know, I, I heard a lot of people were kind of up in arms over the Taj Gibson signing. And I look oh. at it as, I don't look at Gibson as an on-the-court you know, contributor for this team. I, obviously, yeah, he's going to fill in and do his thing. He's not completely done. But I think from a professionalism, from a practice standpoint, from a defense, from a toughness, he's going to be able to help these kids. And I see the same thing with Marcus Morris, man. I mean, I, I, I disagree with you a little bit, actually, because considering that we only have Mitch as a defensive anchor at the, as a center, I feel like the Knicks were kind of missing somebody else who can play defense as well. And I feel like Taj Gibson was brought here to kind of be right. somebody who can teach defense, play defense, and also be – the Lance Thomas of the team. Yeah. That guy Brooklyn more Suns productive right. than Lance, though. More productive than Lance. Yeah. Yes. More, more productive. He, he could be what DeAndre was last year for Mitch. Right. Exactly. Keep him in line. 
definitely keep him in line. So I feel like there might be some minutes, depending, because you know Fizz doesn't like to play defense all the time. Right. But I, I feel like maybe he might like to play defense when it comes Die to Die hard Knicks fan. So he may him. use him as a spot center, put him with uh, Portis off the bench, or who knows? We'll right, see. right. So, yeah, so, I, you know, I, I like that toughness, that grit that they're trying to fortify with this team. I, th- I feel like Julius Randle and Mitch is, is going to be a good pairing also from that standpoint. Yeah. I think Randle is going to bring things, obviously, from the offensive standpoint that, that Mitch just doesn't have right now. You, you know, and, and from the re- – they're going to be on the boards. They're going to crash those boards. Mm-hmm. I, I, I like that duo with Randle and Mitch. I like that with the potential that they have. Oh yeah, I'm ex- I'm excited about the Randall and, and Mitch duo for sure. Especially if Randall keeps uh training those threes. Like you saw he's in those threes in those training videos that hit thirty five percent in the field last season. That has the potential to be a dangerous combo, man. I can't wait to see how that goes. A- absolutely, man. Absolutely. And uh all of those guys were officially uh announced by the Knicks. It was Julius Randall, it was Taj Gibson, Bobby Portis. Alfred Payton Mm -hmm. and Wayne Ellington. So those guys have been officially confirmed by the Knicks. Now, there are other uh, news as it pertains to free agency, which we'll get to. Number one is one Bullock. Yeah, Reggie Bullock. Reggie Bullock. I forgot his first name for a second. I was like, uh, is it Randy? No, that's football. That's football. I got you. I got you. Yeah. So Reggie Bullock, from what they're saying, according to Woj, uh, there's there's a current renegotiation of his contract, a two-year, $21 million deal in which the two sides are now reconsidering or, or renegotiating the contract Based on his potential fitness for the season, J. Ellis. That yeah. I'd have a, I'd never really heard that before. I, I have to admit, I've never heard that before, bro. Uh, I, I believe he failed the physical CP. I, yeah. um, he has plantar fasciitis. If you, if you guys know, if you follow the Lance Thomas, uh, Lance Thomas was played by plantar fasciitis for a very long time. It affects your game. It affects how many games you can play. And... I guess they find that out a little bit later, so they might they might be restructuring the deal, and that deal restructuring might bring us an early gift for Christmas. Yeah, in Morris. <laughs> in, in Marcus Morris, and, and that's another situation because Marcus Morris, they're saying, is contemplating mm. reneging on his oral agreement with the Spurs. DeAndre Jordan, like. <laughs> to come to the Knicks, what does that say about the Orange and Blue, J. Ellis? It, I mean, some people say, well, it's just $5 million, but I mean, hey, money isn't everything, man. Just mm, money that, isn't everything, J. Ellis. I'm Ninja P. I'm telling you, dog. Ninja P. Get somebody in front of these guys, dog. Ninja P and Fizz and those guys, they're very personable. Yeah. You get, Get them in front of a player, and anything can happen. Once they're in front of the player, you just gotta get them in front. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, I you, you have to uh, you have to like what what you're hearing here in terms of Morris. Listen, with the Spurs, clearly, yes, it, it's he he'll be leaving a two year, twenty million dollar deal on a table, and potentially trying to come to the Knicks for a one year, fifteen. But you got to think, there's no there's no state income tax in Texas, so he's saving there if he stayed. The West is wide open. Is the you know just the Spurs can make as much noise as anybody. I feel like in in mm-hmm. the West. So, so you know it, it it should be taken into consideration when a guy is is considering leaving that on the table to come here. Yeah. Albeit, albeit for more money in one year. You know, I I think it still says something about our organization. But let, let's talk about Morris as it pertains to helping this team, what would you think about a potential fit uh, with Marcus Morris on this team? Oh, man. I mean, now with Morris on the team, that gives you another big that they can defend and hit threes in a, at a respectable clip, at least. And that's something we sorely need. I mean, I know I mentioned Taz Gibson before and how important he would be to the development of these young guys. But we have somebody like Morris who can still give you probably a little bit more than Gibson and is a little bit more physical against these bigger guys. And he's, he's going to be an excellent addition, man. I would love that sign. 
I love it, man. I would love it. Listen, he's tough. He can play defense. He rebounds. He can shoot the three, like you said, at a, at a respectable clip. All right, let, let's take a look at his numbers last year. Average damn near 14 points a game, 16 boards, 44% from the field, 37 from three, career high, thir- uh, season high, 31 points and four rebounds last year. I mean, the, the, the dude can still play, man. 6'9", 235 pounds. He can play the three. Yeah. And he and he can play the four. Yeah. You know, so why not? Bring bring this guy in. Again, this is another guy that can help these kids. He can help this team win too, JLs. You know, yeah, that's, that's the point of all these vets. We can't that just is. be talking about just the young guys, young guys. We gotta fortify this team with some smart veteran leadership that's gonna be able to help this team win games. We gotta start winning games, man. Yeah, you gotta start winning games. And I feel like with more vets here, Fizz will be able to implement more complicated systems offensively and defensively and kind of speed up the growth process of these young guys, man. Make the young guys better, man. Yeah, definitely. Make the young guys better. Make the young guys better. Uh, Another thing about Marcus Mars that I would like, I know a lot of people are complaining about, you know, why do we take on so many bigs? Why do we have so many bigs? Well, number one, some guys can play to five. Some guys will play to four. Marcus Mars may be able to come in at the three. And on top of that, it's another asset. To me, assets are assets. If he can, if he can be a potential trade piece at the deadline, or you know, or does he make another guy expendable at the deadline where you can bring assets back? Then that's the name of the game. That's where we. That's where we are right now in terms of building this team. We we're in the asset acquisition phase, and I think Morris helps us in, in so many folds, winning games, helping him with the youth, and another asset that you can potentially flip to a contender at the trade deadline and bring something else back. So I, I think it's a win if we can pull it off. Oh, definitely, I mean, yeah, definitely those one year, those two year deals will definitely can definitely be very viable around February when it's time to to make some tough decisions for some teams. Are we gonna go for it and try to make the playoffs or we're not? And you might be able to pull something if, some, if another team wants to go for it and wanna uh, move one of these pieces. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, I, I can't, I can't fault them for for bringing him in. Obviously, you know, all the off season moves that I would have tried for is uh, trying to get Harkless in the, in that Clippers deal, in that Clippers and Portland deal. Mm. You know, trying to get Harkless, and you know, they, they were able, the Clippers were able to get that that first round pick in the yeah. deal. I would have tried for Harkless. I think Harkless would have been a nice pick. A local guy uh, coming from St. John's can can defend as well, can shoot the three okay. Um, I, I thought Harkless would have been a good pickup. But listen, again, we, we, we are taking on manageable contracts that we can ultimately flip at the deadline or cut at the end of the year, and, and we'll be okay. Keep the flexibility going. Definitely keep the flexibility going. And you know what? If we end up... Looking nicer at the end of the year with more wins, who knows what can happen. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely, man. First call of the night, and first off, shout out to everybody on the Nick of Time show chat. Yeah, I know Welcome. people are wondering what <laughs> happened to the Knicks Fan TV live stream. It is on brief hiatus while I work with YouTube on a resolution. There's a little bit of a technical glitch right now going on with the live stream to say the least i'm still live streaming on facebook so shout out to everybody watching on facebook still live streaming on twitter shout out to everybody watching on twitter the live streams that you see on the nick of time show will be posted on the Knicks fan tv channel as a recording until we can get the live streaming back up so it made just a little temporary setback for a major comeback no worries you can still catch us everywhere like i said Subscribe to the Nick of Time show while you're watching right now. Hit that thumbs up on the show, just like usual, and and we'll be we'll be back up and running, man. So shout out to uh, the shells in here, J- Gil Humphreys, TM Knicks fan TV, Dave, Kendall yeah. Baquero. What's going on? Late night, all the you know the the the, the late night degenerates. JL, this is summer, yeah, man. man. We got a we got a nice little crowd going right now. Yeah, nice little crowd, man. Everybody, welcome. Welcome to the Nick of Time Show. Facts, man. Nick Fury, what's going on? He said, we got you, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right, let's go to the first call of the night. It's Jay from East New York. He wants to talk about Summer League and, and Marcus Mars. Jay, how you feeling, bro? What's going on, man? What's going on, man? Chill, chill. How you feeling, bro? I, I like the Morris signing if we do get him. Yeah, why not? You know, I think that's going to be real good for us, having a vet. You know, somebody that could play the three or the four and, and a small ball five at times if you want to stretch things right. out. 
You feel me? So I think that that's going to be a good grab. And I also like that the Knicks are being very frugal, like, you know, with, with Bullock, whatever they found in his medicals. Like, that shows me that, you know what I'm saying, that people are alert. You know what I'm saying? Like, it seems like there's some type of continuity, you know? Like, there's a, a plan that everyone's following. So, like, nobody's not just, you know, running around with their head cut off. But as far as the summer league go, I'm liking what I'm seeing from the guys and spurts, you know? I just yeah. feel like, Knox got to get stronger. I'm liking his shot, though. Mm-hmm. I've, been, I've been seeing some things from him. RJ, he got to get stronger, that shot. He got to work on his shot a little bit. It's, the shot, like the shot shot's been looking a little, a little flat. Pressure. The shot's been looking yeah. a little flat from, from what I've seen on the games I was at and, and tonight as well. You get the art going. Yeah, you got to get that it art looked, going. In my... In my opinion, it, it looked like he got, like, too much to it. Like, he looked like he got to set his legs and bend his knees, and then he yeah. got to pull. Like, he kind of got to get that motion a little more smoother. Yeah. Well, bro, remember also, that's one of the things he's been working on this summer. He's also, like DSJ, he's also been working on his jumper. So, we got to take all that into consideration before we just, after two, you know, garbage games, try to trash the kid as a bust. I mean, we got right. people got to slow down with that, man. It's wild. No, 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 no. I don't think he's a bust. Yeah, no, not you. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying the, the, the criticisms in general has been kind of outlandish. It, it was funny, yeah. see, because I could see it coming. Yeah, well, I can see it. Remember this year? I was like, yo, the man can't shoot. Yeah. Am I saying man? Shoot. And, and, and I have nothing against RJ. I still feel like he's going to be a great player. It's just going to take us. It's going to take some time. So be patient. He's going to take some time. He's still a triple-double threat, but he's got to learn how to shoot. And it'll, it'll come with time. It'll come with reps. <laughs> Facts. Go, go ahead, Jay. Jay. Jay, did you hear um, Jay Ellis? All right. Yeah, so. Hello? Yeah, one one more thing. Okay, man. go ahead. As, as far as the starting lineup, mm-hmm. yeah, as far as the starting lineup, like, who would you guys have as your starting five, you know? My starting five, I'm I'm rolling with DSJ first. I think it's his job to lose. I want to see him, you know, take that next step. He looks like he's hungry. He's out there in Vegas with the team. He's working on changing his jump shot. So I think DSJ is really coming in with a chip on his shoulder. Obviously, at the two, I'm going RJ. At the three, I'm going Knox. Four, Randall. Five, Mitch. Well, what about you, Jails? Any changes you would make? I mean, I would do that too. But, I mean, here's the thing. Before Elfred Payton there, I would consider having RJ come off the bench. Just so, like how you said today, you see how he was used at the top of the key? He was able to get his mojo. He damn near had a triple-double. Yeah. Yeah, so when before Elfred Payton got here, I would, I would like to have him come off the bench kind of run a second year. But now that Elfred is here, I maybe just throw him in the fire and start him. Mm. So so wait so so wait you would start Peyton at the one or the two you would start Peyton at the two? No 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 oh. like no 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 I would start RJ at the two I would start okay RJ. I got you I got you are you are you saying before Peyton got here before Peyton got here I was thinking the best case scenario for RJ was for him to run a second unit as a yeah. guy yeah. who can run a lot more than that that point guard you know go in between being a point guard and a shooting guard just like he was at Duke right and let. Oh, that was my idea, and people was kind of kind of crapping me, crapping on me for it. Mm-hmm. But you see today, how much better he played when he had the ball in his hand. Much but now better. that Alfred Payton is here, I feel like that's going to be a conflict there with the with the shooting and the they both kind of have the same uses. So I feel like I would throw yeah. him in the fire and start him at the two this time. Jay, what you think? Um, if 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 I had it my way, I don't know. I think I'm gonna get a little bit more spicier with my lineup. You know. As far as as far as starting point guard, I'd probably go with Alfred Payton just because he he could run the offense a little bit better. You know, I, I think I like Dennis Smith Jr. off the bench mm-hmm. if RJ got to start at the two. Mm-hmm. You know, because I can't I can't I can't really see who else who else to put at the two as a starter. You know, because yeah. ISO he got to come off the bench and give us buckets. Right, we need that. You know, so. I would put Dennis Smith Jr., you know, as the second string point guard coming off the bench behind Alfred Payton. And I'll probably put I'll put Bobby Portis in at the three. I'll put Knox in at the four. I just feel like he gotta get his body right. He gotta get his strength up. And I'll put my boy Mitch at the five, you know, just let him rim run and, and protect the rim. You so know, what, what about Julius Randle, man? He's, 
You got to bench Julius Randle. You just gave Julius Randle all that money, man. Oh, we got Randle. He's our best offensive player. Damn. I don't want to put Knox on the bench because I like Knox, man. I can't just, I can't see him coming off this bench. Oh, man. Can't go get no burn because you got got Randle, Marcus Morris. Like, where he going to play at the 3-4? He ain't going to really get no time. No, I hear that. I, I hear that, man. I pre- appreciate the call, Jay. Yeah, Jay Ellis, he was, he was ready to put a, a prized acquisition on the bench, man. Yeah, nah. That's not it. <laughs> can't, can't do it. Can't, Come on, can't do it. Three, Wait, what was the starting five? His starting five, his was, his start, his start of five was uh, Alfred Payton, yeah. Barrett. He put Portis at the three. Yeah, Portis is not quick enough. Nah, man. he's not quick enough. He put Portis at the three, Knox at the four, Mitch at the five. Nah. nah I can't. That can't can't, can't run that. Yeah, he he completely yeah. forgot about Julius. Yeah, put keep Knox at the three. Put Randall. You got to keep Knox at the three. It's it's gonna be a struggle, um, probably defensively. But you just just hope that he can do his best because I don't think he, he he's he's ready for the four. Um, you know you may see him in some stretch if we play a little small ball, maybe with Randall at the five at times if we need a bit more offense. Right. We'll, we'll see, man. What do you guys think of the chat, man? What do you guys think? Well, who's your starting five right now? I guess. The, the biggest debates would be Peyton versus DSJ. Mm-hmm. And that, that's pretty much it. I don't I don't really see other spots being up for contention, really. You think ISO is going to... What do you think ISO is going to tend to start at the two, though? Because <sighs> I, I know... I know... Yeah. I know... I know... Uh, for argument's sake, you know, RJ is a higher pick. Mm-hmm. But ISO can shoot the three and seems just more. He's he's gonna be a shooter. He's gonna be more consistent. I shooter. I I would like I would like Alfred and ISO as a second unit. Yeah, absolutely. I would like Alfred and ISO as a second unit, be because you, you can you can Share get yeah, yeah right you you can get them going. I would go Alfred ISO. Hopefully you get Marcus Morris. You know, a Portis. You know, I would run them. I don't know how deep you would go in the rotation, and, and maybe Gibson. Right. Damn, my, my guy free dot, yo. Come on. Yo, listen, it's gonna be a dog fight, man. It is gonna be a dog fight. I don't know who's gonna get those minutes because, and and, and that's another thing. We have, we haven't Frank. even mentioned Frank. We nope. have not even mentioned. The French Prince. I was talking to somebody on Twitter today. I forgot the name. And I said, oh, it was Ernest, Ernesto, Ernesto. And he, he, he came at me like, oh, uh, you know, I, I hate to see that you're down on Frank. I, I, I'm sure Jay Ellis isn't. And I said, it's not up to me. It's up to the organization. I said, right now, there's at least two guys at the one, the two, and the three that you would put ahead of Frank automatically going Yo, into the season right eight. now. Peyton made it hot for everybody, though. Peyton made it hot for everybody, man. You, you know, and and I was having this debate with uh with some guys in, in in the summer league, and one of the guys made a good point. He's not even a Knicks fan, just an overall basketball fan, and I kind of made that point that well, you know, the Peyton signing kind of puts the point guard situation in flux once again, where we have no real clear front runner. I was yeah. like, you know, I, I would have liked to have seen them just run Frank out there, run DSJ out there. And you made a good point. He said, when is Frank going to earn it himself? You know okay. what I mean? When is Frank going to keep what he kills, JLs? That's that's the question. Well, we're going to see if he makes this FIBA team. That's going to be test one. I, I didn't I didn't even know that was up for, up for debate. Yeah. I, I thought, that, I, I thought he was automatically playing. Nah, I think it's a, I don't think it's a lot for Frank on FIBA though. I think he just has to beat out some people. I think he's, he made a first cut, but I think he has to make another cut. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, but he he was at he was at the summer league. He was out there in Vegas. He's still out there, yeah, mm-hmm. with with Dot and DSJ. But it's just interesting because you have you have DSJ, you have Peyton. They're already ahead of Frank at the one. At yeah. the two, you got RJ, you got ISO, you got Dotson. They're already ahead of Frank. And at the three, you're going to have Knox. You're going to have Bullock. Well, we don't know if he's ready or not, so maybe that's a good thing for Frank. And you could potentially have Marcus Morris vying for those minutes. Yeah, man. You got like, Iggy. I haven't even mentioned it. You know, the, what does Iggy do? We'll see. Oh, the, yeah, can he, can he crack Iggy the rotation? Making Iggy's making it hot, too. It's I, Iggy's making it hot. So this is surely a keep-what-you-kill situation for Frank, and he's going to have to show and prove, man. Yeah, and I even Frank and Dot too. And the thing is too, if Frank can shoot, 
It's a wrap because he can play. He can defend one to four. <laughs> that that is what is going to get him back in. He has to be a more reliable shooter, man. Has he to be could, a more reliable shooter, bro. He could defend one to four. Like in reality, if Frank can just shoot, he'd be perfect. Yeah. He be, but he had to be able to shoot. <laughs> I I agree, man. I, I definitely agree. Um, so we'll see. You know, we'll see. I, like I said, I. I, I don't see the, the confidence in, in him right now, even in his, his press conferences. he feels. I think he feels the pressure. He knows they try to trade him. Maybe he himself was looking for a trade mm-hmm. by switching the agents, going to, going to, uh, to the, the French agent that, that yeah. handles most of his guys. So yeah. I, think, I think what ended up happening was they didn't find the, the suitable trade. They didn't just want to dump him, maybe to the dismay of some people in the chat. They yeah. didn't want to dump him, and I, I think it would. I think it would be in their best interest to get him some playing time to see if you could get a, a good trade for him, or to see what he could become. Yeah, me too. I, I definitely agree. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, right. Once again, shout out to everybody in the chat. Hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Knicks lose tonight on the summer league tilt, eighty five seventy three. CP from Knicks Fan TV, my man JLs from Nick at Time Show, back in action, back in the studio. Let's go back to the calls, Jails. Right. Next up is, we heard from Jay. Appreciate the call, Jay. Next up, Doc Ross from Atlanta. He wants to talk about Iggy and the RJ. Doc Ross, how you feeling, bro? Yo, what's going on, CP? Jay, hey, what's going on with you guys? How you, how you feeling, right. man? Been a while, bro. How you doing? No, nah, nah, I know it's been a while, man. I've been busy at work with the family. It's like, it's like summertime, so... I listened to this show religiously. Mm-hmm. You know, I was driving up to Canada with my family, and, mm-hmm. and I was listening. They was like, what you listening to? I was like, yo, y'all got to be quiet. You know, I got to listen to the show. So <laughs> I've been listening. And, I just haven't been able to be calling and, in and everything. And, and, and since these shows go for damn near an hour and a half, two hours sometimes, I'm sure on that on that trek from the A to Canada, you, you caught up. You were able to catch up. Yeah. Yo, let me tell you something. Y'all... Y'all damn near saved my family, man, because I was about to kill my mother-in-law. I was like, yo, let me just put these guys on. And <laughs> I tried to, um, after the uh, first uh, the first preseason game, I was in Canada, and I tried to call into the show, but y'all canceled it. Yeah, you know? because... So, yo, you were having technical difficulties, I think, with the Wi-Fi. The yeah, hotel, you know yeah, I mean? well, the Wi-Fi yeah, exactly. wouldn't let me be great in Vegas, man. So I just had to just take an L yeah. and just come back fresh when I got home. Yeah, but when wifey saw me, she was like, oh, you calling into the Knicks fan TV? She knew. She was like, all right, leave him. She's like, leave him alone. Leave him alone. You know, leave him alone. in this Knicks phase right now. And I was like, you know how I was. I was like, man, I got to listen to these guys and everything because I know it seemed like I'm not there, but I am there. But, uh, yo. I appreciate it. Let's get something straight, man. Mm-hmm. I, I'm already impressed with RG. I mm-hmm. was happy that we drafted him. No, no regrets right there. But this dude, Iggy, man, he yeah. balled out the other day. He did. And dude was starting to remind me of like uh uh, a white version of Charles Oakley or something like that. He don't back down from nobody. Nah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, one thing I noticed when, when I was at the game, I was at that 30-point game. Yo, he's strong, J. Ellis. That boy is strong. He's headstrong. He yeah. does, he, like like Coach said and like he said, he don't back down, bro. He does not back down. And when the game was on the line, you you you, you saw him like, I right, you know, I got this. You know what I mean? And he, he took yeah. the team on his back, man. I, I like this kid's grit. I like his effort. I've been saying from the beginning he's a scrapper, and the coach, yeah. you know, echo those same sentiments. Yeah, man. I like Yo, he him. gonna crack the rotation too, man. Like yeah. I, that, I, I have no idea. Like to see him play. Like I was looking up into the draft. I was looking at him, and then everybody was talking about him. And I was like, yeah, this dude seems like the kind of like guy that's built for the Knicks toughness. And if you know this with everybody that they, everybody that's talking about the Knicks now, like. All the players, they're talking about bringing this old school 90s mentality back Mm -hmm. with Mason, Oakley, Ewan and them, and they want to bring that back. So I think he fits in with that kind of like, you know, that pedigree. I like what I'm seeing from him and everything. Um, Not too worried about RJ. You know, my my boy, believe it or not, he's a Bulls fan. And he pointed out to me while he was in Canada, he was like, yo, remember, man, he was like, Derrick Rose had like a similar, you know, summer league he was like your boy gonna be okay you know because the thing is you see spurts and flashes and everything and 
I'm just happy he not, he didn't get injured like, you know, Zion Williams, you know. Right. I'm not saying anything wrong with Zion, but, like, when you get injured in the summer league, that's usually, like, a little bad thing for me. I'm like, look, man, you yeah. know, <laughs> something going on there. So I'm actually happy what I'm seeing and everything. Uh, wanted to ask you guys, mm-hmm. who else has impressed you in the summer league besides those two, like, besides the usual suspects, somebody that's not on the radar? Woo! <laughs> yeah, yeah, same here, same here. Maybe not as much tonight, but yeah, yeah. but uh, watching Wooten the first two games, yeah, he man. definitely gets after it, especially on the defensive end. I, I liked what I saw from Wooten for sure. And I think Kavanaugh, the last game, Kavanaugh had a, had a pretty good game as well. Yeah, yeah. Does, does it look like yeah. Kadeem Allen took a step back? Yes. Go ahead, Jails. It did. I was expecting a little bit more for Kadeem, man. Like, he shot so well last season as a guard. I feel like a lot of times he was our best guard on the floor last season. I thought he was going to do a lot better this summer league. And I don't know what's going on with the shooting, but it has not – it hasn't been there. I mean, I guess that he still has the effort, but everything else just seems to fall by the wayside. I don't know what's happening right now. But it is only summer league. I don't, yeah, I don't know. that, that... – that seems strange to me. Uh, last thing, because I know we got other callers. Mm-hmm. Hope that we get Morris. You know what I mean? Like, I always like the twins and everything. So, mm-hmm. if we get him, I think that would be really good. I'm glad we didn't go out there and, you know, have a bus team. I'm actually excited for this season. About, I'm at, I wasn't excited after, you know, the whole Durant. I basically stopped watching ESPN and everything because those clowns, <laughs> like, everybody seemed like everybody want to crown the Knicks. Yeah. But, I like what the Knicks did. They we didn't go out and try like the we got like I like the Julius Randle pickup. He fits actually in with everything. Mm-hmm. And I like our pickup. So, you know, like mm-hmm. people they don't want to give credit to this Knicks organization, the front um office like Scott Perry and them, but they secretly doing a good job. They spending the money the right way and Knicks fans should be happy about that. Uh, you know, that's my yeah. word right there. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we're not going out there getting like bum ass contracts that you that we regret, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We ain't getting no Eddie Curry contracts or nothing like that, you know? Agreed. Uh, agreed, Doc. Appreciate the call, man. Bless, bro. Yeah. Y'all, y'all stay up, man. Appreciate y'all show, man. I really do, man. Got Catch you, y'all bro. later. Uh, as always, man. Got you, bro. Right, um, Yeah, man. Good good call by Doc Ross. Um, listen, my thoughts on Kadeem, I never really thought that he was going to get much better than he's been. He's been a journeyman player, you know? He's been a journeyman player. He started on the Celtics uh, Celtics D League team and, and kind of made his way up. He k- made his way up into the Knicks as, as more of a scrapper. He's more of a defensive guy. Uh, you you guys have heard of. I've always said I look at him more as as a uh, as a defensive minded point guard three. That's all I've always looked at Kadeem Allen as. Jails. Nothing more. Nothing less. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, I felt like I mean, it was towards the end of the year. Granted, I was inconclusive. Like. I, I thought he did pretty well towards the end of the year. Like I said, I thought a lot of times he was the best guard on the floor, even when DSJ was here and Rudy was here. And he saved our asses a lot of times last season. So I was waiting to see, like, okay, what could happen with Kadeem Allen this season? Is it – because, you know, it's a small sample size, but it's a different thing to do with 82 games versus yeah. you know, 20. So I was still on the fence. I'm like, all right, let me see what this guy can do this season to see if I can make, like, a final decision on what, what he can be. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I hear you. And, and the shells in the chat said he was he was good on a bad team. I kind of thought the same, you know. Like I said, I think defensively, I like what he can do, but I never really looked at him as a as a great facilitator or anything crazy like that. He had a couple good games last year for sure. Definitely yeah. had to, had some good games last year. You, you but, just never know because you have these guys in the G League who come up and all of a sudden they buzzing ass in the finals. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then he's like, oh, I found a gem. Like right all the time. So I didn't really, I didn't want to count him out. I just wanted like a wait and see situation. You true, know what I mean? true indeed. Uh, somebody in the chat said he looks like he owes fifty some money. I'm <laughs> dead. <laughs> 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 oh god, man. Okay, let's go to the next call. Shout out to everybody in the chat once again, and uh, for for those of you who who came in late, once again live streaming on Knicks Fan TVs on a brief hiatus. However. Just minor setback for a major comeback. That's the bad news. Good news is, always streaming on the, on the Nick of Time show. So make sure you subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and hit that notification bell. Also, always streaming on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Twitch. That doesn't change. And these shows 
will be posted as recorded content on my channel, Knicks Fan TV, until I resolve a little issue with YouTube that I'm dealing with right now. So just a little, just a little tweak in the action right now, but you're still going to get the same shows. Everything is, is going to be still regular. Just continue to support, continue to share the links that we send out. And, mm-hmm. and everything will, will be uh, will be cool, man. So once again, shout out to everybody in the chat watching us on, on the late night tilt. Uh, let's go back to North Carolina jails. Uh, Boogie, he wants to talk about summer league and, and Marcus Morris. Boogie, how you feeling, bro? Yo, what's good, my team? How y'all doing, man? Good, man. How you feeling, bro? I'm doing all right. Yo, I had to change my name from Jay Better just to make up a day because, you know what I'm saying, I've been having too many issues with Jay, but you, you probably know who I am by my voice. Man. It's your old head, man. But look, man, check this out, man. You know, I was real high up on Morris three weeks ago, and I was telling you I wanted Morris in Brockton. We should have had Morris really before we had Todd Gibson. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that's a great look. If that man leaves San Antonio's organization and wants to come to us, that's a great look because San Antonio is supposed to still be a great organization. For sure. And the way they talk about us is like, you know, we ain't got things good and all that. That's a great look for us, man. Yeah. And we can use him. All right. Second thing is DSJ, he's supposed to be our starting point guard because he's the only one really on our squad that can create for others. Some of them guys can't really create for themselves. Mm-hmm. They're only getting offense out of the system, you know what I'm saying? Right. But that boy Peyton, I'm wondering why are they going to get this man $8 million to come off the bench, you know what I'm saying? Damn. That's a lot of money for him to come off the bench. So DSJ got to really fight and earn his, and his career is on the line. He can't let that boy beat him out. You know what I'm saying? But I like how he's talking with the interviews and everything out there in the city. He sound like, yo, this is my team. I'm here. You know what I'm saying? He's doing a lot of – he sound real good. Yeah, he's, do, he's doing a lot of himself. good PR for but us. Frank, he, he's, the bookie's definitely right on that. Shout out to huh? DSJ, man. He's really doing a lot of good PR for the Knicks lately these past couple of days. That's, that's for sure, man. And yeah, he is. Talk. But Frank – I'm ahead, paying man. attention to Scott Perry's role, man. Mm-hmm. Everybody, Everybody that's on our squad – they birthed by Scott Perry. Frank is the only one that ain't birthed it by Scott Perry. So for real, I see him on the way out of there. Because if they ain't had no plan, if they had plans for him or something like that, they might they might have been had. He, he should have been inside this arm um, in the summer league playing. That's where he should have been. For real, for real. And, and Allen, he need to be out the way. <laughs> Completely out the way. RJ looked it real good when they gave him the ball. Yo, hey, Frank- you're right, man. Go ahead, Jails. I don't think Frank knew he was going to be on the team, so he was like, I might as well sign up for people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's like, I want to go home. <laughs> he was Nobody's like, going to go home, here, man. I might as well sign up for people because I'm on the trade block. I might sure. be gone after draft day. <laughs> True indeed, babe. All hey, right. wherever he want to go, that's just on him. But I really like how 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 the um, um what's it, Bush Holders was coaching. I really how, like how he put decided to put the ball in RJ's hand. And once he did that, my only thing is why you got Allen out there. You should have left that boy Amir Hinton still out there because he came in there like, yo, I need to be out here. Yeah. Allen was just really in the way once you took the ball out of his hand, though, man. Yeah, th- things change. and appreciate the call, Boogie. Things definitely changed in the game. I mean, clearly the game was already over, right, Jail? So, you know, clearly yeah. the game was already over. But things certainly changed when RJ uh, became the primary ball handler. And you, like I said, you like to see it because we're going to need that. We're going to need that when we don't necessarily yet have an established point guard. It is going to be important for everybody, the one, the two, and the three, to, to be you know, more than capable and, and very effective facilitators to help get that, get that ball movement so we're not so stagnant on the offensive end. And also, too, is like RJ was able to bully people in Duke. He was physically bigger than everybody. Right. Playing RJ at the two in the NBA – he doesn't really have that physical ability. He doesn't have the advantage like he might have at the one where he can just overpower point guard. So I, right. I, I think that's a lot of the reason why you saw RJ just kind of play better today. Yeah, <laughs> that's true, too. That's true. I, I think one of the things you saw him struggle with and one of the things that I think he, he will struggle with early is kind of that separation yeah. from, from guys, especially at the two. So he's going to have to use his strength and be a bit more crafty 
to get his shots off and get to the, you know, he could still get to the paint nicely, but you, you saw him kind of struggle trying to break down, break down his man so far. Yeah. And so I think he's going to have to get more crafty in that regard to, to get his shot. So hopefully, you know, he and the coaching staff will, will continue to, to work on that. Yeah, nice right hand, RJ. I just saw that little clip right there. Nice yeah, right yeah, hand. and he, he did go to the right as, as well. Um, yeah. w- one of the things that, that Boogie had brought up in terms of the respect for the organization, this is one of the tweets that Woj had, had put out in regards to the Reggie Bullock situation. He said that he spoke to Bullock's agent, and he was complimentary of how the Knicks handled the emerging situation. He cited how accommodating ownership, front office, and medical staff had been in dealing with the new issues facing the deal, first class throughout. Yeah, That that was Reggie Bullock's agent on the Knicks, first class throughout. Thank you. Thank you. That can't be overlooked. No nah, man, we need, we need that. that. We need that. We need that press. We need yeah. that good press right now, man. Yeah, and and shout out to Woj for for bringing that to light. You know, he didn't have to do that. That that wasn't, you know, so, something that you know was 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 groundbreaking. But I think it, it it means something. It does, and shout out to shout out to Woj just knowing that it meant something. Uh, because you know, like we the bad press Knicks have been getting over the last few weeks is just yeah relentless. So any good press right now. It's just gonna help us. Look, look, we are functional right now, man. Right. It's not we're functional, battle. man. We, so thank you, Wolf. <laughs> we are functional. We are functional. And man, oh man, JLs, let me tell you something. First and foremost, shout out to everybody that that pulled up on us at the summer league, man. The Vegas was lit. The summer league was lit. I feel like Knicks fans were the most represented fans, even more so than Laker fans, probably because the Lakers didn't have a prospect, you know, worth much this year. Uh, could be. <laughs> we, bro, we were in there heavy. And let me tell you something, man. The brand was in there heavy, man. The post-game live, Knicks Fan TV, the nigga time show. I can't tell you how many people stopped me in that arena, in casinos, random places. Like, yo, I love y'all show. You know, you're the first show I go to. I, I, I love it. Appreciate everything you do. So even though you didn't make it, bro, trust me, man. The, the love was out there so heavy in Vegas. It was incredible, bro. It was incredible. And hopefully next year we could, we could get a much bigger turnout. Um, we did a, a happy hour the Saturday. You know, it was probably about 25 of us. I mean, we had people drive from San Fran to come meet us. We had people, my guy Jay from Dallas. My man drove from Dallas to Las Vegas, bro. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> to come through and, 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 and to link up. It was crazy, man. So there was so much love out there. I, bro, I met Woj and Shams the, in the same night. That's crazy. <laughs> it was crazy, man. I'll tell you, everybody was out there. The whole Knicks contingent was out there. Alan Houston was on my flight going. That's my guy. Maybe yeah, I, maybe H2O. Know, shout was, out to H2O, guy. man. H2O was there. Every you know, all the Knicks contingent was there. Uh, ran into Begley at the at the game at the second game. Said what up to him. Obviously, I seen the Flavor Flav thing, which was which was crazy. The, the whole Flavor Flav scenario. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, me and Flavor Flav was, was vibing out there, man. It, it, was, it was crazy, man. Because you know Flavor Flav is from Long Island. Yeah, yeah, I definitely know he's from Long Island. Yeah, so when, when, I, when I started chopping it up with him about L.I. and whatnot, you know, he, he started to uh, to open up with us and everything. So, shout out, sh- yeah, so shout out to Flavor Flav. Was there any Flavor of Love Girls there? No, 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 no. He, he was there with his wife and kid. Flavor Love Days is over, man. Flavor Love Days is over. He was he was there with his wife and kid. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and and uh, and shout out my guy Greg Armstrong. Greg is uh he's about a twenty five year something season ticket holder, so he's out in summer league damn near every year. And so you know, Greg Greg had had the seats up front. You know, we got over there, and and so that's when we got to meet Flavor Flav and whatnot. That's so. Up. Yeah, it, it was cool, man. It was cool. <laughs> and definitely shout out um CK2K and, and Terry and Trey, man. We we yo, we had a blast this weekend with them. We, my we, people's too, man. Yeah, <laughs> those, those are people's, man. I got to I got to hang out with CK2K for the first time. Terry and Trey was out there heavy. Yeah, it was just a good look. It, it was just a good look, man. I, I would encourage everybody who who couldn't make it this year, try to come next year. It was, it was so much fun, man. So much fun. Yeah, cool dudes, man. I love those guys. Yeah. yeah. 
Harry J. I love those guys. Yeah, it, it it was a it was a lot of love out there, man. Even even the earthquake, man. The, the whole experience was crazy. <laughs> the whole experience with the earthquake was crazy, and all that happened in like three four days, man. I, I can't believe it, man. That's crazy, yo. I was like, damn, I wish I was up there. Yeah, then I saw the earthquake there. I was like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I have that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. It was an experience, man. It was an experience. And so, oh, people in the chat asking where Flavor Flavor is. He's from Roosevelt, Long Island. He's from Roosevelt. And he said, because there was a point where him and Mills uh, had a had a real warm embrace. And I, I, I asked him, I was like, yo, Flav, do you know Mills from growing up in L.I.? He said they family. Oh. He, he said they relatives. So they must be cousins down, down the line or something. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, in- interested, interested tidbit. I mean, okay, that's what's up. Yeah, that's and, why you got the Knicks hand, the Knicks hat on heavy. Oh, heavy, heavy. And he's he up. was at the game tonight as well. He was at the game tonight. Uh, Greg, Greg texted me, said he was sitting there with Flav again, so he was definitely there tonight. He lives in Las Vegas now. Okay. Yeah, li- lives in Las Vegas now. So, okay, um, nice. shout out to Flav. Shout out to everybody from Long Island. <clears throat> All right, let's go to the phones. This might be the last call tonight. JL's Brian from Virginia. He says he likes the the Knicks offseason moves. Brian, how you feeling, bro? How we doing, guys? Good, good, man. How you doing? So uh, you guys were in Vegas this weekend, correct? I I was. JL's wasn't. Okay, so you got to at least see a little bit of UFC 239, or you kind of knew what was going on. Oh, I seen I seen all of it, man. I was, I'm a big UFC fan, so I saw all of it. I actually ran into Chris Weidman as well. He's from Long Island, so me and Weidman was chopping it up. He was at he the is, happy he hour. Their he... Longo team. Their yeah. Longo team. Yeah, yeah, yep. So, no, what I wanted to say, uh, mm-hmm. what the analogy I wanted to make was, so mm-hmm. a lot of people think, like, all of a sudden the Knicks are going to start losing their fans to the Nets because of Kyrie and KD. Um, I think the I think the Knicks are Jorge Masball, and we got our hands behind our back right now. Like we're not going to do something, but we're going to run up and meet every team in the face that underestimates us this entire season. I, I love and that's to how see I it, feel. Man. We've okay. signed all dogs this offseason. And our whole young team last year played their asses off where they were getting a standing ovation at MSG um, their last game of the year when we were the worst team in the league. Now we added a bunch of dudes that will not only break your eye socket if they need to, um, (laughs) but a lot of dudes who know how to play basketball. And we add that to a bunch of young dudes who definitely want to learn how to play. Um, So I don't see us losing any fans to the net. I don't see us losing any fans at all. I think this year we're really going to prove to people with the young core that we have and the people that we sign that we're tough and we're not to be messed with. We're going to be a tough out every single night for people. I think at first, um, you know, people are going to say, oh, we're going to play the Knicks tonight. It's going to be an easy night. And then when people start to play us, they're going to be like, yeah, I'm really not trying to play the Knicks again. We're not the most talented team, but we're gonna we're gonna box some teams up this year. I, we're, we're, hey, we're not gonna be messed with this well, year. And that's well how said, I man. Feel. And we're not losing any fans to the net. Well the people said. are gonna fall in love with this team. The the first time RJ and Knox get knocked on their butt, see what Morris does. Yep. See what Randall does. See how Mitch reacts. We got some enforcers. Everyone man. is going to fall in love with this team this year. We we got some enforcers, man. Appreciate appreciate the call, Brian. Brian's sprinkling some optimism at the yeah. end of the show, JLs. Got to finish on a high note. Got to finish on a high note. I mean, <laughs> so so the comparison that he was making for for those of you that didn't watch UFC, or don't watch UFC. There was a fight, and basically. Uh, the guy caught a record KO. Basically, as soon as the bell rung, my man ran up with a flying knee, JLS, and knocked this dude into oblivion. Wow. Into oblivion. My man was sitting there in a coma, lifeless, for wow. a good five minutes, bro. Whoa. Bro, crazy. Crazy. yo, real talk. I mean, listen, I know UFC is not for the faint of heart. Some people can't take the, uh, the, the gruesomeness of the sport. I love it. I like it better than boxing at this point. And it was the most impressive knockout I've ever seen in my life. He started the fight with his hand behind his back. As soon as the bell rung, ran up with a flying knee 
and my man just laid there in chalk. Wow. Toronto YB knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, Toronto. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. But uh, but yeah, to Brian's point, JL, I think listen, you, you you hope we surprise some people, right, with the roster moves that we made. As mm-hmm. he said, we got basketball players, we got high IQ players for the most yeah. part, and we got solid veterans. We got grit that it's, that they're gonna buy into Fisdale's system. Yeah. That there's no there's no Joakim Noah's you know regrets. Ah, uh, there's no cupcakes. Today. Right? There's, there's there's no cupcakes. We got professionals that are yeah. gonna come in and play hard. You know, another thing you guys should also read the article on Close Up Three Sixty on Bobby Portis. That's a really good. You read that, right? Yeah, I definitely read that. Really good read. Uh, hardworking man, though. Yeah. Hard work, yeah. I, I, would, I would recommend it, man. Read on Close Up 360. They did a real dope piece on Bobby Ford Portis. It takes you through, like, the day in the life of Bobby Portis, his workout regimen, his off-the-field um, interests, you know, in business. He's really trying to make sure that he establishes himself after basketball, which is really important. So, you know, a lot of people just think of Bobby Portis from, from knocking out Meritage, but... There's a lot more to him. Yeah, it makes you root for the kid, man. It makes you, it makes you think like, yo, maybe, maybe there's a potential for a lot of these guys that we signed to, to take another step. Cause the way these guys are working in the off season, you, you figure something has to kind of pay off, and he's no different. If you read that story, he's, yeah. he's constant work. From his, he shed a lot of weight. He's, he's been on a diet. He's working on his defense. Uh, he's working on his flexibility. I mean, not flexible. His, his um, not as, not as flexibly, but his um reflexes there you yeah go. <laughs> like there's a chance we'll see we'll see i'm excited to see what portis can do this season yeah me, me too man me too man and uh listen like i said i, I like brian's optimism we'll, we'll see what happens we need to win games man 17 games is not going to be acceptable i think 29 is realistic if we do anything more than that it's house money yeah, I'm gonna say 30, 35. You, you're going, you're going, you're going. Uh, 30, 35, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Cool, cool. I'm trying to find this clip real quick before we get off. Hang on one second. I'm trying to find this clip. Well, here it is in still photos of my man, basically laid out. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was crazy, man. Oh, here it is, right here. Bow. Wow. Oh, oh no, no, oh no! This is—they made this one into a meme. That's not it. They—they they basically made it into a meme. I want to find the real one. Uh, wow. oh, is, uh, really? Oh man! Wow! Yeah, my man literally dropped and was laid out, bro. Laid out, man, into oblivion, jails. Wow. <laughs> it was wow. it was insane, man. It what was insane. The? Yeah. And and supposedly the other dude was, was talking real slick to this guy the whole fight. So the whole pre fight, you know, leading up to it. So my man just say, you know what, enough is enough. Sheesh. Enough is enough. Didn't so anyway. Say, say that again? I don't know what the punch after that. That's crazy. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. Well, in UFC, you know, until the ref stops the fight, you basically have to, like, continue to obliterate your opponent until it's over. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so that, that was that. Where that's concerned, man. But, uh, all right, JLS, let's get out of here, man. It's late. Yeah. Good show, though. Good show. For, for a late night tilt, man. We had uh, over 300 people on the Nick of Time show. So, salute to everybody right. that was watching. So to everybody on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. Yep. All right, JL, let's go ahead, go ahead and uh, wrap up, man. All right. If you want to check um, the uh, podcast, you definitely got to go to soundcloud.com slash time show. I have a bunch of links in my bio where you can see where to go for uh, the podcast. You go to SoundCloud, iTunes, uh, Google Play, Spotify. Uh, just Google the time show. You can find all those things. Also, if you want to find me on social media, it's the KLT Show on Twitter. Um, and um, Nick and Time Show on Instagram and I should be dropping the video for the new episode of the Nick and Time Show tomorrow um, possibly the next day depending on when this video renders that's it 
back to you, CP. <laughs> yes, sir. Good show, JL. Great to be back, man. And uh, hey, listen, man. Shout out to everybody that joined us tonight. Knicks lose to the Raptors. Only summer league, eighty-five, seventy-three. But I think a uh, nice little bounce back game from RJ Barrett. Seventeen mm-hmm. points, ten rebounds, five assists. So we we saw some nice things with RJ playing the one in the second half. Second half. And let's see if we can carry that over into the next game. So we got another game tomorrow night: Knicks versus Lakers. Come back for post game. We will be back. Uh, once again, shout out to everybody that supported. Uh, for those of you who are new, shout out to everybody. Leave us with a hashtag new in the chat. Shout out to all hashtag new. You can catch this show also in audio format iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher. So, the Knicks Fan TV you can catch the show in audio format. And uh, join the conversation on Twitter. Share these videos on Twitter with hashtag PostGameNYK. And we will throw you into the Twitter group chat and also the Discord group chat. So it's real cool if you want to keep the conversation going after the show. So once again, thanks again for everybody who's coming out. It's getting late. Um, Tack, what's going on, Tack? The Shells, appreciate it. Call Ramada, I appreciate it. Gregory Lee, Coach East Carter. Thanks again, man. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you guys tomorrow. JL, so if you want to shout some people out, man, go ahead, bro. Yeah, man, uh, you know what it is, shows, man. They, they call me Tack. Always got to shout out Cody. I don't even know if he's here or not. Call <laughs> I'm not even sure if Cody's here. <laughs> hey, yo, pal, what up? Yeah, man. Uh, Pet Nod, I saw my boy Wayne Pet Nod was in here earlier. Okay. Uh, Parker, uh, Gil Humphreys, all the guys who are the regulars and all the new guys here right now, Nick Fury, all these guys. Shout out to all of you. All right, fellas, we will uh, check you guys tomorrow. Once again, hit that thumbs up button on your way out. It's very important to support us and share these videos. Have a great night.